All right, good morning, everyone. Every Monday, we're gonna do, a, as always, a brief market outlook, and then we'll go over some top ideas and any ideas that you guys have as well. You can always post them in the chat and as well. So having myself have a picked a great weekend to go away. Friday seemed to be kind of a disaster in the markets, and it was good that we were kind of racing on the highway and not seeing kind of the car into the market. Really no strong sectors, nothing really setting up, and pretty much everything looks extremely weak. You know, we had the you know, REIT selling off on Friday. We had materials, you know, retested basically that part of time high and, and completely just, you know, dumped. Very you know, similar theme here. Healthcare almost retesting, you know, back in the middle of the range. Energy, which has been like our strongest sector lately, is finally, you know, we mentioned don't fight the trend. Now the trend is starting to break. So now the fact that a lot of us got stopped out of the OKEs and, and the Oxys on Friday, that's the, the clue that it's like, this is no longer the easy trade. And this was, we, we kind of we had that little suspicion up here that like, you know, after this major run, we're going to keep taking these breaks until they break. Now we're seeing that and avoiding oil is going to be the easy thing for the foreseeable future. Just like we saw with you know, some of these sectors, you know, re, you know, looks amazing, retests all time highs, and it's back in the middle of this range, you know, 50% pullback of this relative range, or maybe you know, 30%, but still a significant pullback. Same here, you know, significant run up, nearly 30 to 40% retracement, you know, of this move already. So for energy, for having such a significant move lately, don't expect this to like pull back to 104 and then flag out perfectly and then have it next level. This can easily come back to even the 200 day and still be completely fine. So this is this is something we see from time where it's been the focus and now it's not the focus. And we want, we want to just know that very clearly and just avoid this sector for the foreseeable future. Um, moving on again, consumer sta uh, staples still doing all right. Just some prop taking up here. But again, you know, these are definitely spots where you want to be taking some profits if you were buying them, you know, 10, 15% ago. Utilities, again, like we talked about last week, they were just getting tired up here after the again, vertical move was on. It just seemed like, you know, a reset need, need to happen. And, and not a lot of this, some of the sectors not too surprising. You know, some of the ones that were kind of in the middle of the range was a little bit more surprising. And then the weakest sectors, you know, biotechs continue to just kind of age over. Um, we saw that with telecom as well. We were expecting this, this breakdown through 110. And we can just see the breakdown stage that it's in. We just see that it continues to age over. And, and we, this shouldn't have been like a shock that we were, you know, to see this breakdown. It's just, it's in the, the stage four downtrend. Uh, same with the material sector. I'm sorry, the industrials still in the same breakdown. And the SPY as well looks like it's heading back towards these lows. But again, we're in this range bound market. Everything looks perfect at resistance. Everything looks absolutely horrible at support. We often want to do the opposite. We want to be, we think we want to buy near resistance. We want to be selling. And we also want to be selling your support. We want to be thinking to buy. We're not trying to be the hero and catch 410 on the way down or 420, wherever this is going to stop. We want to see it settle, maybe shake out. Maybe it still needs to really shake 400. And then we can find those buys on the way up where we have that 10% range to take advantage of. Where up here, the bird market has already gone up 10%, and it's hard to expect that follow through. So this is, you know, we don't want to be trying to catch the low here. We want to let it, well, whatever it's got to do, and then try to find those buys here. So I would expect even this week probably to be very hands-off. Um, going on a couple of the top ideas I'm looking at, I don't, again, don't expect them to go. The C still could not break 70. Right now it's breaking, you know, the recent support. So we probably won't have to buy 70, you know, maybe this breaks down into the 60s and we'll find like a bigger support buyback than having to buy the breakout. Um, this ESS, one of the REIT names, we was able to retest or test a new all-time high. And of course, sold off on Friday, like basically every stock, but this is still very strong. Um, that through, you know, this through this 360 area in time could be, a, you know, a very nice little breakout when uh, the market kind of finds its footing. Same in that same REIT space as EQR, same thing. You know, these are both very strong REIT names, both top right, both basically kind of blue sky breakouts and both same action. You know, they put in new highs and then with the market, they kind of pull back in. So these are two names, more so ESS and, UP, and EQR would be ones I'd focus clo more closely on than like C, like this, I don't expect to anytime soon. And then this IT base still 
still kind of working at you know developing, uh, but still could be one you know up to three ten in time. But I think this ESS and EQR are probably the, my two bigger focuses for the week ahead. A couple little lesson learned for myself for the past week is OKE. This is just one where you know this was normally a trade I would have given back to break even, and, and just given the action that we got for those three days, which is one where I just took the profits and now. Obviously glad I did, but not really a lesson there. More so the lesson was just TSO and GD. Both, you know, these are like strong breakouts. Was expecting a big breakout, didn't get it. You know, the data I got in was basically a doji at highs. Next day, inside day doji. No reason to give this name any more room than necessary. You know, respect that stop, took the 2% loss. And this would have been a 10% loss, uh, if not more at this point. That that's a nothing loss to me and we can easily go back into it. And same, you know, same with this GD, this was like a half a percent loss. You know, we we're expecting this breakout through 247. We just didn't get it, not a big deal. Half a percent loss, insignificant, could easily go back and trade this name again. Um, so for me, that the bigger lesson this week was just for more so these failed trades, you know, this could have been a 10, 15% loss. And this was a five or 6% loss and they both were basically insignificant losses. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Heaven, if there's any top ideas, you can go over them now. I, I would not imagine there is much. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't have much to that I'm looking to buy right now. I mean, the, the, the name of the game for sure is to be hands off right now when it comes to swing trading um, and just kind of doing some market research today, looking for relative strength, looking to see which sectors are holding up if the market decides to continue to sell off today. Um, definitely the same sort of lesson learned this past week of just being willing to take, you know, break even loss well not even a loss but the break even or you know one percent loss just to get out and kind of preserve the mental capital more than anything else and uh, just be able to tell yourself that you can get back into the trade when it sets up again so same thing with gd i was in that one um oxy all these other names that uh that ended up selling off um but that's also why we got top losses which is another reminder this week because friday obviously we were not in front of the screens we were uh allegedly cruising 100 miles plus on nice mountain roads, allegedly. Um, so that was a lot better than watching the market uh, poop its pants. And, um, you know, just it was a, a good way to, to get away. So that's just a reminder to all the traders out there that are keeping their eyes glued to the screen. Sometimes you, it's better to just kind of step away and, and uh, go do some other things and remind yourself why you trade in the first place, you know, because we don't trade just to trade. We trade to be successful at it so we can go do other cool things. Um, so that's what we got to do this week and this weekend. So, uh, yeah, this week I'm just focused on, uh, finding that relative strength. I don't plan on putting any risk on and just waiting until we start to see some, uh, some stabilization. Yeah. Even with like the broad market, it's, you know, we're not, we're never trying to catch a bottom. Like we're never trying to like, we're waiting for this day or this day, but, but to see a bottom, it's like, you really need to have like that, like a little more of a gap down. Like it's like, it's hard for today. It's like the market's down a little bit. And it's hard to expect like it to open basically like a near Friday's low and then immediately like just trade higher where yeah, yeah. you can get, if you get like that, that day where it's gapping down 1% or gapping down whatever, 2% into the open and you get that flush out, that's like that max pain in like the short term for the market where that's where you can kind of, you can actually see, I'll show up, I'll put like this little arrow. So you have like this day, this is an example, you know, mm -hmm. day down, gaps down, that's where like, it was like the max pain. And then it was able to, you know, buyers were able to step back in. Same thing here, you know, you know, five or six days down, we have this bigger day where it kind of gaps down and rips back higher. Like that was that like, kind of capitulation bottom. And then we see the same thing here, you know, gaps down, opens, like looks like, the, you know, the worst thing in the world. And that was like that low. So you, you, you it's not what we were expecting. We shouldn't expect it, the market to open today sell off very controlled and then like rocket higher. Like we kind of need that like gap down that like max amount of fear to get those sharper snap backs. And when you don't get that, you get kind of those like slower bounces where it's like, everyone's not really like rushing to do things. But I, I think just overall for this week, until we really test, like I really think 400 is kind of the, the line that we need to test, but even like, you know, 415, 16, yeah. like we really need to be, like seeing something down here before really thinking of any, so we want to see that and then still have like a day or two before trying to get back in. We're not trying. Yeah. To that's what I was going to say is if you notice any of these other bounces, 
it still takes a couple of days after that reversal to really prove itself. So that's kind of what you want to remind yourself is like, you don't want to just see a, a, a long wick at the bottom be like, okay, here's the reversal time to go back all in because it's going to bounce because you really don't know. And it can kind of, and that's what the market will do. It'll pull you in and think that it's going to do what it needs to do. And then, you know, it'll pull the rug right when you're like fully exposed. So you want to be careful with that and just slowly build your way into things when you do start to see reversals. And then of course, like the key, then something that I've learned through, you know, William O'Neill's book is just the follow through day, you know, so looking for the actual follow through day, if you don't know what that is, um, just briefly speaking, it's when, you know, we're selling off, you want to see uh, sort of like a bounce back and we'll see that first big green day. And then after, I believe like three or four days, you want to see another push higher on expanding volume. So at least a 1% increase on the day and on expanding volume up. And that's like your quote unquote follow through day. Um, they don't always work. It doesn't mean that the market's going to bounce, but every market bounce has had a follow through day before it started bouncing. Yeah. So that's just, that can be like the key signal to start maybe, you know, getting back into things slowly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, again, we're just, we don't want to, this is often the times where people want to rush into things now. Not like this exact moment, but like, it, you know, if we're starting to bottom, it's like people are trying to rush in too soon that like, if you, you know, everyone wants to catch this day and it's so much harder to catch this day than to like get in the second or third day here and then be involved in this move where it's like so much easier just to wait for this than to try to rush in it and try to, I'm going to get, you know, 412. It's like, that's, you know, we don't want to be trying to do that. We want to just let it settle out, know that, okay, our risk is much tighter now looking to get in. And that's just patience. I think this week is just going to be, you know, some hand sitting and uh, letting everything kind of shake out. Yeah, I, I also had a few people uh, reaching out, asking me about some shorts and all that kind of stuff, um, which is usually a signal for me to, to be hands off on the shorts. Most of them are, are really, really extended here. I mean, even it sucks that I had called this solar edge to a T that it was like aging over, um, SEDG. Edge, yeah. So I was, I was looking at this one for the short when it was kind of bear flagging there for a few days before that big dump on, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, but I completely missed it. I just was not was not there watching it. But um, yeah, most of these shorts are, are pretty extended to the downside, so I would be uh, pretty hands off on that side too. Yeah, if you weren't yeah, if you weren't short anything going into Friday, it's like you're it's almost like a pot. And that that's like I think that the hard part with shorting is that after the fact, it looks so easy. Even like this, if we like, obviously none of us were thinking this these sales were going to happen, but. It's like you gotta really be shorting here. Like you can't. Like when you when it starts looks so obvious now, it's like you're just, you're never. Yeah, that, it's always a lot easier than after the fact. But in like like basically, you could have made a shit ton of money if you instead of having stop losses, you had like a, a order that would just convert your position to a short, and you would have banked, right? But I mean, it it should have would have could have. You never see that coming. And like, <laughs> tight, yeah. we could we like the prop days we would do that. So say you were like long on your shares. Uh, you would have a sell stop in for 200 share, like to sell 200. So you would. Right. So you'd go back. Uh, yeah. You'd take the downside. If you're going into a trade, like in that mindset of I'm, I want to buy hundred shares of TSCO, but then if I'm wrong, I'm going to short 200 shares. Like that means you have no conviction in the idea. Exactly. Yeah. And you're going to get chopped up either way. You're probably going to mess up both because you're going to. Buy yeah. <laughs> you're going to stop out, flip short, and then it's going to go back to 240. And then it's like. And that, and yeah, and that just snowballs. It just snowballs the loss so much because it's once you get started, start getting chopped up like two, three times into something like that versus just taking the loss and then reevaluate. And like you have to, I think you have to hit the brakes and like go to zero first before going in reverse. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a. Yes. I mean, I shake that. Like, I remember I did that a, a couple of times in the properties. We would like flip short with when the ideas didn't work. I gotta, I'll ask him if he, if he remembers. That. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I didn't have any uh, member ideas. Actually, there was one I noticed in Alpha. Um, what was it? He, it was Kusha. Kusha was showing us a recent IPO. Let me pull it up. Hold on. It's a S-T-E-R. <clears throat> Turn and check Corp. Yeah, that's right. The one good thing is the IPOs aren't going to be as correlated that closely to the market, especially in the beginning. They're just gonna really kind of do their own thing. But yeah, this stuff through like 29 looks phenomenal. 
Yeah, it's just a little thin. That's the only issue under under 300k uh, average volume, but um, it's still there. And then, I mean, the one the one name that I still sort of have on the watch is this CHD. Um, it does have earnings soon. CHD, C, CHD. No, C, C as in cat. Not T, C as in cat. Are yeah. <laughs> you messing with me, bro? <laughs> Every wrong letter. Oh yeah, six again. Yeah, so this uh, CHD is still looking decent with this cup and handle at highs. It has earnings in three days, so I want to see this sort of just kind of hold up. If if the market does sell off and this holds up, that's a really, really great sign, and then we'll see what they do with their report um, on Thursday. So this is like a, we have like the buy stop limit. This would be like that buy stop limit through 105 and like up to, you know, 105.50, and if it was going to go... If it's going to have the opening range break for earnings, you'll be involved. But if it gaps up to 110, you don't get, you know, randomly, yeah. you know, five bucks higher. But yeah, it looks it's really good. Yeah. And then uh, that's about it. Hand sitting. All right, guys. Well, we'll be back here at noon with some trading Q&A. And if you guys have any top ideas, definitely post them in the chat today. Yeah. And if you have any questions you want us to go over in the Q&A, send them directly to me, please. All right. See ya. You're welcome, Kyle. Catch you later.